as in a number of other countries, the state Supreme Court of North Carolina has made a ruling on redistricting that has made it much easier for Republicans to lock in effectively free seats, free seats in the state legislature, free seats in Congress. Notably, they don't have to do anything to appeal to voters. They don't have to become more popular. They don't have to do any of that stuff. They will just now be freed up thanks to the state Supreme Court to draw districts that give them an outsized biased amount of representation in the state. So the Republican majority in the court, it just flipped recently. Threw out a 2022 Democratic ruling against partisan gerrymandering, saying that the state constitution does not limit the practice. And so they can just do effectively whatever they want. Interesting, like coincidence, is that this new Republican majority on the court, these are partisan elections, by the way, that put the judge justices on there. This is not speculation that they're right wingers, they're Republicans. It's so interesting that that frees up the Republicans to give themselves more spots in Congress and the state legislature. And if you were hoping to amend the state constitution to stop this, well, this also makes that much more difficult. So we were talking in our meeting about the guardrails against democracy. This is how it works. It doesn't matter how unpopular they become, there is always something to protect them that is insulated from the will of the people. And we're seeing that in more and more states. By the way, this is not a small difference that this is gonna make. As of right now, nationally, Democrats need to flip five GOP seats to regain control of Congress. It's expected that this change just in North Carolina might put four Democratic incumbents in jeopardy. So like that's not the four that they need to take over. That might double the gap right now between the Democrats and Republicans. The Republicans didn't come up with any new plans. They're not more popular. And in defending against this, I wanna read this quote from House Speaker Tim Moore, who said that last year's elections quote, seven seven does not reflect the will of the voters in North Carolina. So having seven Democrats, seven Republicans doesn't reflect the will of the voters because that split and the state isn't split when you talk to the voters, which might make sense. Except I looked at what the vote share was in 2020. Trump had 49.93% of the vote, Joe Biden had 48.59. That is 1.3%. It's about as split as it could be. 7-7 seven, seven seems exactly like it's reflecting the will of the voters there. He knows that, he doesn't care, it's all about the power. JR, what do you think? 100%. They hate their voters, they hate uh, the state. Uh, they're looking for extreme and utter power. Look, there's many ways that Republicans are looking to eliminate democracy. This is one of them that isn't talked about as much because a lot of people don't understand how these things work. So they can do this under the cover of not even darkness, in broad daylight, because many people won't follow it or know what's going on or necessarily say anything about it in particular. And yo, once they get a little bit of power, they change the rules to make sure that nothing even changes next or that they have no possibility of losing no matter how badly they don't represent the people. Uh, <laughs> when they look back later and say, what happened to this country? And they'll blame it on trans folks and black folks and Latinos. They won't discover that it was actually the call was coming from inside the house. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.